Unlike some of our other Paderewski lectures in the past, we'll be speaking in conversation tonight. And I have to say, it has been my great honor to prepare for this event um, through the last several months, but particularly in this last few days, with uh, Hannah's music just surrounding me at all times. <laughs> we have, um, she has done some incredible work with our students on campus to prepare for this event. And I would like to say that in particular, what I have noticed most in this time with your music is actually that, is time. The importance of time for you in, in everything that you do throughout, uh, throughout your compositional history. Um, and I would love to hear uh, a bit more about how, let me actually start with uh, your own quote <laughs> um, and about how you see how, t how time works not only in a, in a formal sense, in a, a tempo, of course, uh, with music, we have, we have time written in everywhere, but in this manipulation of the experience for the audience of time. I'll read, I'll read the quote and then we'll hear more. Art means slowing down or accelerating the time of nature. It means canceling the reality of the time of nature, canceling the reality of nature, cal canceling the reality of time making them all unreal. This is the kind of art I want to engage in which it, while composing my music. So what I would like to hear more about is why? What is it that brought you to this conclusion? Yes, uh, what I wrote it, what I said, yes. it was true, that is, uh, time is, uh, for the music, music doesn't exist without time. So it's sort of art, needs time. And uh, in general, I want to change the uh, sense of time. For example, to say it very simple, when we have peace, which is uh, for one hour, we feel that it's only 20 minutes. And uh, so you get in a trance and uh, you forget about everything and just you are in this, in the music. So that was my aim to, to create such an art, such music. I hope I succeed. I think you will feel these these temporal changes that uh, that Hanna has been able to achieve in her in her music. That you truly feel suspended in the moment of of your music, and I wonder. This was such a different. Um, it was such, it's such a different sense of time, it's such a different sense of uh, movement through time than what was happening when you were first in your compositional career, um, when you were studying with Kotoinsky, for example, in Warsaw, and the, the things that were happening with the post-war avant-garde, um, obviously quite a bit post-war, but... <laughs> um, and I wonder how, I, I know that your stylist style has changed over time, but I heard you say, to some of the students that truly your style never changed. This surrealism is what you have always been. Yeah, actually, the, uh, I wrote always my music, but of course it was very difficult in the 80s when with this album that was so strong and people who wanted to create a bit musical music uh, had a problem. And I was one of them. But uh, of course I, I stay always myself, so I try to, to, to show, to my emotions, so let's say I had a, always context and uh, I tried to do it in a good form and the context was kind of also with very many emotions and very big emotion mm. because the music uh, without emotions is really, it doesn't exist. Uh, uh, form for form, yeah, maybe, but it's not for me. And uh, well, in the, in the time of years, I, uh, my style was changing, of course, because I dared to, do, to say something more. And uh, of course, the experience, musical experience, but also a life experience changed my mind. And, but I think I, I go gradually on my way. And now I arrived at the music surrealistic, surrealism and the music, and uh, you will hear it in the last piece, Fado. Yes, we'll, we'll hear it quite a bit. And I, as, since you've mentioned, as your, as your style has both changed, but also, I, I would say, almost more blossom than change. It has, mm -hmm. it has come from, from the challenges, as you said, of, of finding, uh, finding the space for that voice yeah. in the early time. 
I wonder if I may ask, was there, did it feel more challenging, particularly in the space of, of avant-garde as a woman, to be able to express well, that? Well, in that time I didn't think about it, because in Poland we had different things to fight mm. with. And uh, when I came first time abroad to Holland, then uh, to England, to Denmark, Germany, of course, I, I got this question, how it's possible to be a female composer, but how it's normal, but it's normal. I didn't have this sort of complex, and uh, still I don't have. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so the music surrealistic, as you, as you call it, <laughs> this beautiful phrase. Music surrealistic, that sounds like it's French. <laughs> I, I've heard you speak of this now several times with um, performers and, and students over the week. I wonder if you could give us your definition of... Well, I would say that's very simple, that you are a DJ and you are sitting on the mixing table, you have different sort of music, and uh, you just manipulate with this music and, uh, of course, giving permanent culmination and uh, the form. I would say in a different way. You have different doors and in different rooms you have different music. You open one door, you have to open second door, third door. You close first door, open fourth door. <laughs> and you hear this music and sometimes it crash, sometimes it go on one line. But the, the meaning is to fill all these lines together and uh, to, to follow it and to get in the trance. Mm. Yes, you, I heard you refer to yourself as a DJ of energies. Yeah, DJ of energy and every energy is every structure, structure. And that's what I found most interesting in your, in your surrealism because it is it is, it has a beautiful form. It, ha it always has a form and it has a recognizable form. It is, it, go ahead. You have to recognize things. If I, uh, if you, if I would use a, a musical language, avant-garde language, mm -hmm. you wouldn't recognize this. So there, are, there have to be, I, I need to have elements. You keep it in your mind and that can, I can manipulate, you know? So for instance, you recognize some, elements, eh? so, some fragments, some melodies, and you say, yeah, but it's strange, it goes, you know, uh, like in a loop, why? It should go further, you know, or stops immediately and uh, another uh, thing comes. And, uh, well, so you, you play like, like, like with the balls, you know, you have three or four and always you have to catch them and you never know uh, when you catch the balls, so I will also Compare with uh, with uh, with the road around the big mountains, and you turn and you turn, and you never know what will come uh, from your uh, side. And you never know when a rock may break. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But you, but you, you have a destination. So the destination is clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have heard in this music that. Uh, this music surrealistic that you, in this style that you have created, really of, of your own. With this, I don't hear it in other in other music of your of your generation in the same way. Um, I hear this this external form that you uh, that you create and that is absolutely recognizable by any any type of audience, not necessarily musicians, um, but uh, uh, anybody listening to music. And then this in internal dissolution. Does this there's almost a melting inside the form. Yeah, but you know, now I have idea to explain, like, like we talk, huh? we, you can talk no, normal time, you can talk faster, slower, but if you talk very slowly, so the, the listener will follow you, will wait for every sentence, for every word, for every syllable, for every single letter. This tension. So I make the, this uh, abracadabra with the time. You know, <laughs> it's the important how you put it elements together after each other. This is this, this regular your time. Yes. Period. And then and then you get lost again. <laughs> I remember when I was young and I had the uh, um, possibility to turn pages as string quartets, chromos, mm. and they played the uh, second string quartet the third one. And uh, that lasted four hours, 15 minutes. I didn't know that. And well, in the beginning, that 
perspiring and I saw the audience, they went out, they came back, maybe 20 people came back with glass of beer and they stayed. And in the beginning it was impossible to stand, but after a certain time I could choose. And what I want to do with my music, I want first to start with a normal, let's say normal time, to prepare the songs. Okay, we go, that is like music should be listened. And then I shut it down. So first I have to create a mood, get it in a trance, and I can do what I want. And do you feel that that, that trance-like state, that, um, that emotional trance-like state that you talk about creating, is that some of your influence of your time, for example, studying with Luis Andresa, no, or in your not period at all, of minimalism? Or? Nothing to do with nobody. I felt it from I, I exist. Uh, ah. Yeah. Uh, it is connected with philosophy, it's connected with how I, how I look at the world, uh, how I feel, uh, my sensitivity. Uh, I'm very sensitive and I have uh, some uh, connections with <laughs> different dimensions, let's say. Uh, particular uh, type of intuition. Yes, and I try to achieve this, I try yeah. to express this. On my way, and music is for me the best language to express this. I think that this would be a good moment as we um, as we discuss the the serialism surrealism of, of Hanna's music to explore um, a, a short excerpt of one of her pieces written in 2021, so very recently, and I, I wonder... 22. 22, yeah. alias. Um, 22. Um, so we all know what the last few years have been like, and I, I wonder how much of that experience of, uh, of isolation or of, of, of what you experienced during um, during these times that we've had the last few years, did that influence the creation of this piece, or was this already created in your mind? That was, you know, that it comes gradually. I don't know how mm. that, that, that happens. Yes, yes. Um, so I would like to play. We'd like to hear an excerpt now from Alias from 2022 for um, for Wind Quintet.
<laughs> we got a little extra bit from the beginning, I think. Um, so you can hear this push and pull, this, this, these changing tempos, these changing, the changing sense of, sense of time for the musicians, for the audience. And I, but you always have these markers for the audience to come back to. This, uh, the, the wind quintet, of course, has that long tradition in, in Polish music history, and, and it's, it's a very recognizable form, and yet you feel this complete uh, 
almost exit from time and space with, with this music. We'll hear it more later in, in Fado as well as um, in La Scala Solo and these other pieces that have these elements. Um, but even in your music from earlier in your career, I find these, these points of time always mm -hmm. that yeah. the audience of the, connects to. Um, and I, it, it brings me back to, you know, Lutoswavsky talked about even in the 1950s of, of creating these shapes for the, um, uh, for the audience to know your music inside these, these forms. Um, and I, I know that you even had connected with Rosowski at times during your career, but even, even though he, his music is so different and, and, and everything, the experience of it is so different, I think that the connection to the audience runs through that. Do you, um, can you tell us more about how you, do you, are you expressing, are you hoping that the audience is hearing your expression of an internal emotion or an, ex or, or an external experience? How do you how do you hope that the audience connects to this music? So first of all, I'm uh, I'm the first listener to my music, so uh, I have to feel myself. Mm -hmm. If I, I if uh, it touches me, if it touches me, I hope that the audience will also uh, take my, my music in, in the right way. I believe it is it is truly universal, <laughs> and I. I I believe that you will all hear that as well as we as we hear more of this music and connect more with it. Um, is there anything anything more you would like to tell our audience? Well, maybe oh, about no. this concert tonight uh, uh, because there are very different pieces. The, the, the first piece, the saxophone quartet, I wrote in, uh, a long time ago, 24 years ago. So I was in a different period of my uh, creation. And uh, last time I saw I wrote for my son, who was also a trumpet player, and was born with his bachelor's years ago. So and, uh, it was also very personal it's because I wanted to he asked me to do to write to this and uh, so I did and uh, later what you heard is that I presented the electronic version of Last Calamity which will be performed uh, in uh, October 18th in, in Poland premiere. So then I will work more on uh, Things. And in the sixth circle, it's a piece I got many years ago, but it was also in the period in my life I changed my style that I dared to, uh, to have an emotion, you know, straight on, let's say, without any combination, and, uh, no color, filter. Right, this, no uh, filter. Yes, no filter. No filter with this. Uh, Avant-garde uh, uh, patterns, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> which we had to use at that time. And the last one, the Fado, uh, it's I think one of the first pieces that in a surrealist style I wrote. So you will hear also sort of a melody which never ends. And, and then finally, it's almost like ends. <laughs> but the music will talk. And the music will continue to vibrate. <laughs> so thank you very much. We will take a brief pause um, in order to set the stage for the concert, but then you will get to hear four more incredible pieces by Hanna Kulente. And please stay and, and speak with the composer after uh, the concert as well, as well as the performers. Thank you very much. We'll be back shortly. And we uh, oh. <laughs> And if you want to listen more to my music, the, uh, I'm on a YouTube channel, so yes. you can find many orchestra pieces, solo pieces, chamber music. It's quite a bit of music to experience. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>